How's it going guys? It's Ryan here and welcome to my low level Krill Tsitsaroth or Zamorak God Wars Dungeon solo guide. Uh, so first off, beast here is some info about the Zami boss. Uh, we've got combat level 600, uh, counts as a greater demon uh, for greater demon slayer tasks, has 55,000 life points, has a max hit of 6,000 plus uh, with its special slam attack, we'll talk about that later, don't worry. Uh, attacks with melee and magic, uh, hits poison of 450 damage, so don't forget your anti. Um, grants 5,136 combat experience, 1,694.8 hit points experience, and 2,151.5 slayer experience per kill. Uh, the Zami boss also has a weakness to fire spells. Uh, now, requirements and recommendations. Um, 70 constitution is actually required to enter the Zami uh, portion of the God Wars dungeon, uh, as well as the Troll Stronghold quest, which is a requirement uh, to enter the God Wars dungeon. Uh, now, uh, base requirements, I'd require you to have 70 magic, 75 defense, 37 prayer, and 52 summoning. That's for the spirit terror bird. Uh, although it's a little better if you can get 75 or 85 magic, uh, as well as 70 prayer and 67 summoning, although not crucial. Uh, now I'm going to show you how to get there and how to get the kill count. Alrighty guys, so to get there, um, either break a Trollheim tablet, use the Teleport to Trollheim spell, or use the Teleport to God Wars dungeon spell, uh, whatever you want to do, uh, and then kind of go as I go. Now, I'm going to quickly talk about Godly Protection because it's an important thing to talk about. Uh, killing the Zami boss, you want to make sure you've got an item equipped that says Zamorak on it. It could either be Zamorak War Priest, it could be Zamorak Arrows, that's what I'd recommend doing anyway, because they count. Uh, but yeah, anyways, once you get to the God Wars dungeon, you're going to cross the bridge that I just crossed, and then you're going to go for your kill count. Uh, now, kill count is very easy. What I like to do is I like to kill the five imp spawns, and then while the imps are spawning up again, I like to kill anything else. Could be werewolves, could be gorax, uh, could be spiritual warriors or spiritual mages. Doesn't really matter. Uh, but yeah, that's how I like to get my kill count. You can do it a number of ways. I know people that like to just kill the imps, so they just hop around and kill the imps. You can do that as well if you want. Um, and I also know people that just kill these spiritual mages because they like to get dragon boot drops. Funny story about that, you'll see it in a minute. <laughs> um, the one spiritual mage I happened to kill actually dropped me a pair of D-boots. Uh, not that it really matters though because D-boots are only about 10k, so if you're killing the spiritual mages for some extra profit, I don't know if that's the, the best idea in the world. Uh, but yeah, as you can see, I mean, the kill count is climbing up. It shouldn't take you super long to do, uh, but yeah, once you've got it, uh, you need to get up to 40, and then you can... Um, you can go to kind of the south and enter the Zami boss room and fight the Zami boss for all of the beautiful drops. Uh, so anyway guys, that is the kill count. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about ability bar setup. Uh, so for this guide, Magic is strongly recommended uh, due to the combat triangle, weakness, and abilities. Pretty much, for this guide, you're going to want to be using magic as a low level. As a high level, uh, melee works alright, um, and so does range, but because of the weakness of the Zami boss, as well as the uh, attack styles that the Zami boss uses, and the abilities you have uh, at your disposal if you're using magic, I would strongly, strongly, strongly recommend using magic. So that's the type of ability bar we're going to talk about. Uh, so, some important abilities. Uh, my G ability, Sunshine right here, obviously that's an important ability. Um, I'm just highlighting it right there. Um, that's the most important ability, uh, although it requires level 85 magic, so if you don't have Sunshine, you can use Metamorphosis uh, to the exact same effect. So whether you have Metamorphosis or Sunshine, uh, they both work quite well. Uh, yeah, so just make sure you've got either Metamorphosis or Sunshine on there. Uh, tendrils uh, over here on my F, not that important, not crucial, uh, but good to have. Uh, make sure you've got Asphyxiate as well as Wild Magic, as those are basically the thresholds you're going to use once you've used Metamorphosis or Sunshine uh, to do some mass damage. Uh, now, other important abilities, uh, you're going to want to make sure you've got Debilitate over here. Uh, that's a very good one to have as well. Uh, aside from that, you'll note my multi-target ones are towards the front of my action bar. Uh, that's my dragon breath and my chain. Uh, there's a reason for that. You want to make sure they're there as well, uh, just to get some maximum heals if you're using something like Soul Split, or you've got an aura like Vampirism. Okay, so now I'm going to talk about gear setup. Uh, in terms of gear, basically use the highest tiered weapons and armor of the correct combat style you can. Uh, so for example, Ganodermic would be better than Arms, which would be better than Batwing. Or a Staff of Light would be better than an Arum Staff, just basically the highest tier uh, for magic. The only exception to this is a Slayer Helmet on task should always be worn because it is absolutely baller to the max. If you've got a Greater Demon task, make sure you're wearing a Slayer Helm. 
Uh, now, I'm going to talk a little bit about the Attuned Ecoplasmator, uh, which works exactly like a bone crusher for ashes. So if you guys didn't know, the bone crusher basically instantly buries bones uh, as soon as they drop on the floor. Um, and basically, in conjunction with a demon horn necklace, uh, you basically get free infinite prayer. Uh, as I say there, uh, so it saves a lot of prayer, so I'd strongly recommend you have this. Uh, so when I look, go into gear setup next, uh, I'm going to show you guys what the gear setup looks like with the Ecoplasmator and without, because it changes slightly, because you don't need nearly as many prayer potions if you're using this thing. Now, so yeah, I'd strongly recommend getting this thing, but, you know, if you want to just try Zami, feel out the water, you don't really need it. Uh, but if you're planning on doing any amount of Zami kills, you're going to want one. Uh, so now, inventory, familiar setup. Uh, this is with the Ecoplasmator, which I've got right down here, uh, and my demon horn necklace up there. Uh, so yeah, as you can see, my familiar, I'm using a terror bird. It is full of sharks. Uh, I got my super pots, that's super magic, that's super defense, that's anti-poison. You want to make sure you've got the anti-poison, uh, 100%. I've got an extra terror bird, which is also very important to have. And then as you can see, I've got a super restore, uh, in case I run out of summoning points so I can summon that second terror bird. Five prayer potions, and then the rest sharks. Make sure you got your fire spells, and a tab in or a tab out is also good to have. Uh, in terms of the gear I used for this guide, I used War Priest uh, with a Ganodermic Plate Body. I know, not the best looking combo, uh, but basically it's it's very basic gear. It's not super high level. It's tier 75 gear all the way through. Um, so yeah, it's not uh, super high level. I mean, you could do it with Aram, Subjugation, anything like that would work just fine. Uh, in terms of weapons, I'm using a Staff of Light right there, which is tier 75. Uh, for rings, I've got a Ring of Wealth on, and for auras, you're going to want either Vampirism, Penance, or, or the aura that boosts your magic accuracy. I can't remember the name of it at this moment. Uh, but yeah, that's what your invent and familiar setup is going to look like if you're using the Ecoplasmator. Now, if you're not using it, it's ever so slightly uh, different. Oh, and I blew that picture. Wow, I very much blew that picture. Uh, pretend that's an Amulet of Glory, and pretend that is not an Ecoplasmator. Basically, what you want to do is you want to bring an extra row of prayer potions, uh, because you'll be using more prayer. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you guys the kills and how to survive the slam attack. Alrighty guys, once you've got your kill count, you're gonna enter the door to the south. Uh, make sure your quick prayers are good, your potions are good, uh, set your quick prayers like I do. Obviously, if you do not have level 70 prayer, uh, just use the uh, regular boosting boosting magic prayers that are not um, augury. Uh, and basically, make sure you drink all your potions. Make sure you drink an anti-poison. I know I don't have one in this clip, Make sure you got one, it's very important. Uh, and basically attack the boss instantly. So, the boss has a slam attack uh, that can hit up to 5,000 and even upwards of that. Uh, but basically, you can only use it 21 seconds. But I find it kind of annoying to have to try and like set a timer or count 21 seconds each time and then use debilitate. Uh, so what I like to do is I like to work my adrenaline up, I like to use a threshold ability, uh, like Wild Magic, which I did, and then once my adrenaline's at 95% or around 90%, I use it. Uh, so as you can see there, that was perfect timing, <laughs> uh, and the debilitate went off just before I got slammed. And you'll see it another uh, couple times later on in this clip. Um, but yeah, that's what I like to do, uh, because instead of having to just kind of trivially count, you basically, you do it with your adrenaline. Now the problem with this is if you're eating, uh, it makes it a little tougher, because then basically you need to use debilitate with slightly lower adrenaline, uh, because as you eat, your adrenaline bar lowers. Anyways, after that, I use Sunshine, you can use Metamorphosis either way, I'll work back up to your thresholds and just finish off the boss. Uh, so after that, you're going to want to kill the minions, and once the minions are dead, uh, you can recharge your prayer at the altar, uh, kind of to the east, if you want to do that. Okay, in just a second, you're going to see another kill where it works the exact same way. Uh, you work up to a threshold, you use that one threshold, something like Wild Magic, uh, and then what you do is you get almost full adrenaline, you use the debilitate, and then you block the slam attack. Now, no, just a note, you're not going to block it every single time. Sometimes he uses it like right at the start of the kill for whatever reason. Uh, so yeah, just be aware of that it's not going to work 100% of the time, and that's why you want to keep your HP relatively high up. Uh, but he will not use the slam attack twice in a very short amount of time, so you can be aware of that as well. Uh, so if you're very close to the end of the kill and you just got slammed, you probably don't need to eat up. You can probably just finish off. Uh, but as you can see, debilitate, and then slam was uh, blocked, or a part of the slam was blocked, uh, which saved me a lot of damage. Uh, now, something I wanted to mention about why I don't actually have a melee portion of this guide, because I usually do. Um, if you're using the Berserk uh, ability, the Berserk ultimate ability, you get hit double damage from people, and that includes the slam attack. So if you're Zerking, uh, you can actually get one banged 
10,000 from the slam, and it's actually happened to me a couple times uh, in boss commentaries, and it's really an awkward time, uh, so that's why I don't recommend melee, although you can range if you absolutely had to, it would work exactly the same way as this. Uh, but anyway guys, I'm going to show you guys one more kill. Uh, but yeah, that's kind of the gist of, of the Zami boss uh, in terms of auras, vampirism, penance, whatever you want. Um, not super important. Uh, just make sure you got the highest tiered weapons and armor you can, and you should be pretty good to go. Uh, you get lots of great drops. You get Addy Plates, you get some ores, you get Wines of Zamorak, Rune Weapons, and of course, the Subjugation. Okay, and the last thing that's always important to talk about is notable drops. That is not drops that can be put in a banknote, although for the most part they can. Uh, that is notable drops, as in important drops. Uh, you got your subjugation equipment, you got your Zamrock hilts, Zamrock spears, uh, clue scrolls both elite and hard, war priest of Zamrock armor, and this steam battle staff. Uh, so you can make a ton of money here uh, if you if you do it properly. And yeah, that's about it for this guide. Uh, so yeah, anyway guys, thanks so much for watching this video. Hopefully you enjoyed. If you have any questions or comments or concerns or anything like that, uh, feel free to throw them in the description below and I'd love to answer any, any of those for you guys. Uh, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, this guide was voted on a straw poll on a previous video where I said what guide do you want me to make next? Uh, and you guys said Zami, uh, this is the low level, the high level will be out a little bit later. So yeah, anyway guys, have a good one and peace!